right. Hi, friends. Thanks for being with us tonight. I got a special guest. He's a healthcare hero. He's a nurse and a stand-up comedian. He's a double threat. Please welcome one of the funniest guys I know. Definitely the funniest guy I know who can remove a catheter. Please welcome Mr. Mike Lee. Hey, guys. How's it going? Thank Mike, you. Mike, how are you, buddy? Good. How are you? Good, good. Thanks for being with us. Yeah. My pleasure. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time out from all the stress you've been going through. And I thought we'd start off with something, a little bit of an icebreaker. How does this make you feel? Needles. Nervous. Daylight Savings Time. No, not bad. The new Bill and Ted Excellent Adventure movie. Great. Great movie. Babies. Cute. Crowd work. Not good at it. Overnight shifts. Don't like them. I'm a day shift. Day shift represent. Yep. Yep. Zoom. Takes some getting used to, but, you know, it's just another pathway for uh, other things, you know? Interviews. Hate them. <laughs> Except for this one. I like this one. <laughs> that is the correct answer. Yes, yes. <laughs> the new Justin Bieber single. Haven't seen it. Haven't heard it. <laughs> good, good for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and meatloaf, the food or the singer? Um, uh, gonna go with the food. When did you start working as a nurse? Uh, started working in 2016. So it was recent. Um, there were, we can get into the whole thing, but uh, long story short, uh, didn't have any kind of career prior to that. Just worked a little bit as an EMT, you know, driving the ambulance and uh, did a few retail jobs, uh, secretarial jobs, and the whole consensus is um, all leading back to stand up. So, like, if you really want to dig in to why I kind of got to this point it's because I you know I first started back in um it was it 2005 at a at a talent show in um Levittown Long Island and that's where I met Joe DeVito and he was like I think he was like six years in and we we're just waiting to go on and do our sets and I said I do a really good Richard Pryor impression and he goes I don't do celebrity impressions. <laughs> he goes, you'll find out. <laughs> that went up and I just tried to do my Richard Pryor impression. I got one pity laugh and I was like, oh, okay, all right, <laughs> this isn't working. But um, yeah, I just did it for a year. I really didn't know what the hell I was doing. And this was before podcasts and everything. So I was just like, okay, so this is kind of like after a year, after a year, and then you just start hitting the mics and you realize, oh, nothing might not come out of this. And, you know, I didn't realize that it was craft you know, with podcasts and everything and interviewing all these comics, you're just like, oh, there's a craft to this. It's not just, you don't just go up and wing it. Right. But we, didn't have, we didn't have podcasts back then. So like, I, I was just working, because it's hard when, when that's what I realized I wanted to do. It's just like, when you question yourself and then you have to think, okay, what else can I do? What else? It's like, you gotta, re when I had to reinvent myself, that was like the hardest uh, conversation to have with myself because it was it was such a passion. I'm like, well, what else do I like? And I don't know, I was just kind of like drifting. I was like, all right, I'll work in retail for a little bit, just only clothes at Old Navy and um, had a few secretarial jobs. And then and then I just um, decided to go into uh, EMT for, some, for whatever reason. I was like, all right, I'll, I'll try EMT. That sounds kind of cool. And by this point, like the comedy was just like way gone. <laughs> I was like, I wasn't even thinking about it. And I was just thinking of like job security. Okay. And, uh, you know, so long story short, I was like EMT. And then I thought, okay, well, I can't be doing this forever. So what's the next thing I can do? And I was around so many nurses as an EMT. I was like, okay, maybe I can do that. I mean, it sounds promising. Good job security, good, good salary. And you only work three days a week. Oh, you work three days a week. Wow. So if I wanted to, I could go back and stand up. Oh, nice. Okay. That was the that was the plan, all throughout school. And I said, I'm gonna finish. I'm gonna get my license, and I'm gonna get my job, and I'm gonna dedicate the other four days out of the week to that. And that's what I've been doing for the past four years straight. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. So you started doing stand up around the same time in 2016, or you were doing you did stand up earlier than that? Um, back in 2005 is when I started. And then I stopped for like eight years or something. 
but I would just kind of coming in and out of like Otto's shrunken head mic and I just kind of dabble in it, but I, I wasn't really focused on it like a craft like I am now. I'm trying to build something. I was just like, oh, maybe this is funny. Maybe I'll just get up there and just do it and call myself a comic, but it's like, it doesn't work like that. Mm. It doesn't really work like that, <laughs> especially if you're trying to build something. So um, it, it's about the same time as I was starting my nursing career that I started this too. So um, the progression is kind of on the same wavelength, only nursing is a little more because I'm getting paid for that. <laughs> and <I'm laughs> so. That's amazing. Yeah. I love how you were doing stand up and you're like, let's say, what could be my day job? EMT, or like, like something that seems really hard. Like, <laughs> but I mean. I, you know. I didn't know what I wanted to do at that point. Like once I decided to stop, um, you know, the comedy, I was just like, okay, what else can I do with my life? Because that's just, that's really hard. So like, it's just say you really like drawing. You love drawing, but then you realize one day, I, I just can't do this right now. It just, I'm, I don't have the same passion. I'm surrounded by negative people. Um, what else can I do? And then to have to dig deep and find something else that you can do and make money with is hard. It's a really hard conversation to have with yourself. Without a doubt. And, yeah. yeah. I think about it to this day. I really appreciate you bringing that up because I think it's, it's so relatable. A lot of artists, creative artists, you know, have that dilemma at times where it's like, well, what does my work look like? How do I define my career? How do I support my art while finding this balance with an income that's where I'm financially stable and having to make a lot of difficult decisions and choices based on that. Um, but it's really cool. I mean, part of the things that I think is amazing that you're, you know, you're helping people and you look to see if there's a theme or like, you know, like you said, like, why am I doing this? What's the purpose and all this? And I'm just so curious as to if you see different skills you use as a comedian, if they connect with your work as a nurse or vice versa. I would say that the, the most common skill that the most interchangeable skill is uh, interpersonal skills. Like you have to have really good communication with uh, your patients and also with, you know, the audience, like the, you're talking to somebody, you're always interacting with somebody. Um, with, with, with nursing, it's maybe eight to 10 sick people a day. Um, you know, comedy could be less than that <laughs> if it's like a bar show or something that nobody shows up to. But you're still trying to make a connection with uh, somebody. So I think that's the, the, the most common uh, theme and in, uh, inter interchangeable skill with both. You have to be somewhat of a people's person, you know, whether it be like some, I'm sure some comics, you know, they, they couldn't do nursing because they don't have that interpersonal skill where they can connect with someone. They can only do it on stage. Well, this is different because there is no stage and you're really working with a, a sick person and, um, but you still have to talk to them and then you have to talk to the family members and, um, it can be, it, it can get very stressful, but you, you have to be somewhat of a people's person. Otherwise you will not last as a, as a nurse. Yeah. I, I can't imagine. I mean, do you feel that to deal with stress, to break news to people that sometimes I'm sure is uncomfortable to break, do you kind of use humor to, to communicate certain things to patients or? You know, I'm actually so glad you brought that up because before I, I was doing nursing, <clears throat> while I was in school, I was like, well, how am I going to break news to family members? Uh, how am I going to, um, you know, comfort them if, you know, they find out their family member dies and like the car arrest or something. Um, humor is not really some, a tool that I use for that. Uh, you have to be empathetic. Uh, with them. Uh, I mean, there are other situations where you try to shave the edge off. Like if you're, if you're starting like an IV line and somebody and they hate needles and they're super nervous, you know, it's always nice to add a little, if you can add a little joke on the end of it or whatever, but like it, it, if it's like something like serious, it's just, it's just like not the time like or place for, for that. So I, I don't really like, unless you know, there's a good positive outcome, then you can say something funny. But um, to break the tension, it's really, you can't really break the tension of like a cardiac arrest with a poor outcome. Yeah. 
Yeah, you, yeah, exactly. You're not gonna be in the ER like, hey guys, I'm gonna squash watermelons like Gallagher. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It, exactly. <laughs> do you get a lot of material from the work that you that you do? Is a large source of your material work related? You'd be surprised, no. But what I what I like to do is, um, I'll take tropes. Like for instance, uh, laughter is the best medicine, right? They that's a big trope, and obviously it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just kind of like break that apart and uh, kind of take it literally and just kind of like contrast those two like well what if what if it was the best medicine and try right. to come up with with that but as far as actual situations I mean I did you know there's the first time you get peed on so that's always fun um <laughs> first time you get pooped on those are obvious but you know I'm always trying to like not go for the obvious uh, it's so I don't really take too much upon unless it's something like life changing or something, or I learned something uh, that day. I try my best not to take from uh, actual work. But who knows? You know, maybe I'll find a way to make it work. I, was say, I got a lot of stories. I got a lot of stories, man. I can't imagine. I was yeah. gonna say most of my jokes. I'm not even in the medical field. Are peeing poop jokes? So during the pandemic, you know, obviously, um, along with working in the hospital, are you doing stand-up at this time? What does the scene look like, the comedy scene during the pandemic right now for comedians? Park shows, park shows. Some people have started to go back into uh, bars. Some people are going into basements of bars. So have you done like Zoom or any type yeah, of- Yeah, no, I've done some Zoom. I've done some Zoom. I did uh, Kristen Feltman and Jess Rotoni. They, they were actually the first ones to book me since the uh, pandemic on their, their Zoom show. I think that was back in uh, May, April or May. So that was cool. And yeah. I've done a I've done a bunch of tiny cupboard um, Zoom shows, and those were really awesome. That's with uh, uh, what is it, uh, Joanne Wilson? She's got some. She got some really good lineups on there, you know. And I've actually done outdoor um, shows. I did one at the tiny cupboard on the rooftop uh, with Jake Velasquez. Uh, he has a show called Penthouse Comedy, and I also write my own. What's your process like for writing material? Is there a system that you go through? Do you have a style that you like to, or like a notepad I, to write in? Yeah, I, I use both. I notepad, I use uh, Google Docs because I'm not paying $80 a, a year for Microsoft Word anymore. Um, I live right by the seaport right now. So I just walk, some, well, it's cold now, but I used to just walk out to the seaport and just write over there. But I do a lot of rewriting now like of older bits because like as you as you advance and grow the more you do it the more skill you pick up on and sometimes those bits you had like two three years ago you weren't you didn't know how to tell it you didn't know how to say it you didn't know how to write it but now with your skill you do know how to do it so i'm actually going through a lot of old stuff and actually trying to <laughs> rewrite that or whatever but a lot of stuff i also just keep in my evernote um like if I just think of like a line or something, oh, that's a funny line. And then and then I'll go back to the Evernote and I'll just try to rewrite around it and then really break it down and just think of all the points of views that I can I can do with. I'm not good at act outs, but performance is really the goal this year to to improve on that. What makes you laugh when you're not feeling well? Donald Trump's Twitter. <laughs> A lot of good one-liners. Movies too, you know. There's there's so many, like The Simpsons and and uh, the Naked Gun movies. Like satire movies are probably my favorite genre. Like I love um, like the Naked Gun movies and oh yeah, it's classic. Hot Shots, like the that all that silly stuff. Just the gag, the sight gags, just like make me laugh. During the pandemic and being a nurse, what have you learned about yourself during this time? life is precious i mean sometimes you you know i, I realize you know I, I should be a little closer with my my parents um call them a little more see them a little more because we had a lot of co-workers that actually lost their parents uh, <clears throat> so it's like from ages 24 to 30 and they lost their parents and they so lost sorry. their grandparents so just being more present and cognizance and calling your parents more. 
I realized, okay, this, this is something I have to improve on. I don't want to put you on the spot, but would you like to share one of your jokes? You know, one of the phrases I hate hearing in healthcare is, laughter is the best medicine. You know, you always hear that. Laughter is the best medicine. Morphine is the best medicine. And then I say, uh, I wish laughter were the best medicine. I really do. You know how easy my job would be? Uh, says here, the doctor diagnosed you with a urinary tract infection. So I, ha I have to take antibiotics, right? Nope. He wants you to watch Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. Watch the sequel. You get that UTI right out. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> A little bit. It's good talking to you, Mike. Thanks for hey, doing it. You too, man.